Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh my name is Mr. Middle Path in today's video we're going to go over what happened with Sister Jumana for those who need the backstory we raised $25,000 for her to get out of Gaza and into Egypt safely she was pregnant at the time and she had recently given birth to two babies Asir and Aysil and uh, unfortunately just three days after they were born K-I-L-L-E-D by Israeli soldiers specifically a tank and we've been trying, we, I've been in touch with the husband, his name is Muhammad, and we've been trying to raise money for him, for him to get back on his feet. And I asked him what happened, and he actually sent me the, a message of exactly what happened in Arabic. I've translated it, and I want to read out the message uh, to you that gives us the details about what really happened to our sister Jumana, Allah Yerhamha, and, her two, uh, and their two children. Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Mahdi Ibrahim Ayyub from Gaza, 33 years old, the father of the two children who were killed by the Israeli occupation army along with their mother, Dr. Jumana Farid Arafa, less than 72 hours after their birth. That is, the children were less than three days old when they were killed. An Israeli tank artillery shell was fired at the house where I was displaced, where my wife, her mother, and my twin children were present. On the morning of August 13, 2024, at 10 a.m., I was at Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital, located in the center of the Gaza Strip, to obtain and receive the birth certificates for my children, Asir and Aysil. For five minutes after receiving the birth certificates, I received a call informing me of the calamity that had befallen me. An ambulance was entering the hospital at that moment, while I was on my way out to go home so my wife could see the birth certificates of our twins, Asir and Aysil. Little did I know that the ambulance was carrying my wife and children. So he's on his way back home with the birth certificate and the children and his wife's bodies are on the way to the hospital that he was just at, subhanAllah. A neighbor told me, we were at Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital. Your children, your house was bombed and your children and wife were martyred. I returned to the hospital and they were in the morgue. They told me, they told me they had fallen from the fifth floor due to the force of the artillery shell and there was no bodies of children left, just small fragments and pieces. At that moment, I insisted on taking a last farewell look at my beloved wife and children. Their bodies were full of blood and burns. God is sufficient for me, and he is the best disposer of affairs. I was holding the birth certificates in my hand and crying with a broken heart. I don't know what to write or how to describe what happened to me. It was like a nightmare I can't wake up from. Even now, all my dreams and hopes of having a wife and children and living in peace and security have been destroyed. They are gone, and I am left alone without a family, living with immense sorrow and oppression. Allah Arhamhum. This is one of those stories that just makes me think, what if, I mean, there's so many variables. The husband could have been with them, but Allah chose for the husband not to be there at the time, Brother Muhammad. When he was on his way to the hospital, came back exactly when he's coming back is when their bodies were on their way to 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 the hospital as as bodies subhanAllah so not any only a few days later he has to go and get the death certificates it's a very very sad event a lot of people said it was an Israeli airstrike it turned out that no it was actually uh, a tank was going through the area and saw uh, Dr. Jumana the mother from the window and the it, they fired at um, her window and what happened is what we just read in the story. So when I asked him, I was like, brother, why did you guys go back to that area? I mean, didn't they kick you all out and you guys had to stay in tents near Dir al-Balah? And Dir al-Balah has another area in, in Gaza. And he said, yes, but they, the soldiers left. They withdrew from the area and everyone was going back. So we went back and went back to the house, uh, the apartment, I should say. And uh, what happened is that she was killed. So... I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them Jannah to Firdos and hopefully those two babies will be pulling their father up into Jannah with them on, on that day when we're going to meet our Lord and He will ask us what we've done with our lives. So speaking of what we will do with our lives, we are trying to get him back on his feet. He does want to go to Egypt and just start a new life. Uh, that was where his wife and their children were going anyways. They were going to Egypt. And uh, this brother has uh, a father who has, uh, who's, who's ill in Egypt right now, and he wants to go and be with him. As well as, inshallah, the money that we get for him, he will also be trying to set up a well 
like a fountain for people to drink from in Gaza so that uh, whoever drinks from that fountain, th those good deeds for feeding people, for feeding thirsty people or for giving thirsty people water will go to his wife and his children. Allah Yerham him once again. So that was the video. It was a very uh, somber and sad uh, situation. I cried when I, when I uh, read his message. Um, I had it obviously translated. And uh, when I spoke with him, you know, just thinking about it and just thinking about the situation, in some ways, them hitting, getting hit by a tank is a little bit worse than a, a plane, uh, but uh, still better than what some of the other Palestinians are experiencing in terms of direct torture and things like this. So may Allah have mercy on them. May Allah uh, keep our brothers uh, steadfast in this and, and give all the Muslims, uh, the righteous Muslims, victory. I mean, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone.